keep a lot of things for yourself. You must think that you can eat it. Thank you so much. I'll come back and have my share. Welcome to the show. Today I have a wonderful lady. I call her mommy. Uh, she's a reverend. She's a marriage counselor. And also she mentors a lot of ladies and gentlemen around the whole world. She's in the person of Reverend Emilia Bodidakwa. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Nana. You're looking gorgeous. Thank you, my girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about marriage yeah. because I know, first of all, you're a marriage counselor apart yes. from being a pastor. And um, you've been married for such a long time. Yes. You told me before we started 36 years. Yes. And how has it been? Thank you very much. Uh, it's been very inter interesting, exciting, sometimes very challenging. But with God in the vessel, we always laugh at the storm. At the end of the day, it's very fruitful and rewarding. Very fruitful and rewarding. Mm -hmm. I want to start from the journey of marriage because we live in a generation whereby marriage is it's something that you know people are not enjoying mm -hmm. or the, the union of marriage. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, parents used to enjoy when somebody said, oh, I'm getting married. You know, mm -hmm. it just wasn't about the wedding, mm -hmm. but the journey they were going to mm -hmm. start. But these days is divorce, separation, mm -hmm. and all that. And women and children mm -hmm. are the most that affect. Mm -hmm. Could you take us through maybe your personal journey in marriage? Okay, first? thank you very much. You know, marriage is an institution ordained by God himself. Well, the circumstances through which you might meet your partner mm. might vary from one person to the other. But at the end of the day, it is God who brings two people together. And if two shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done for them. Uh, what is happening now is that there's so much self in marriage. Mm. But marriage is not about oneself. It is about your partner. The most important thing and the question to ask oneself is, how best can I help my partner to be who he, he or she is and to prevent him or her from who she is not? It is about how much I can invest in her life so that he or she can fulfill the purpose of his life. So that you reach a point, you look at your partner, and in your heart, you become very happy. But contrary to this, now you realize it is about self. What do I get from it? How much can I also be blessed from it? No. So long as the focus is on oneself, you will miss the mark. So if you look to God, and also ask for ways and means of helping our partner, being there, being committed. You see, there's no commitment now. A lot of things are taking the place of the marriage itself. So at the end of the day, you realize that the foundation to begin with was wrong. The building blocks, they were all wrong. And even the reason for entering into it was also wrong. But if the reason or the source, the foundation is of God, and your uh, partner's interest is what is the is your priority. You will make it at all costs. But so long as there is so much self, mm. self uh, trying to come out to everybody for everybody to know, you did this, you did that. It really negates and destroys the very purpose for which God brought the marriage into uh, fruition. Wow. So as you said, um, you know, people go into marriage nowadays without being committed and also with the wrong motives. What were the words I want to know, or our viewers want to know, that Reverend Brady, that you're married to yeah. 36 years, told you that or what did you see in him for you to say yes this is the man i want to marry thank you very much uh, surprisingly we met each other when we were quite young and i didn't have much experience but i just i was just trying but i realized he was a serious guy very focused and determined he didn't have what others had 
to propose marriage, but he just proposed. And well, you know, with ladies, with girls, that's at that time. So I just wanted to stretch him for a while and really uh, test whether he, he was serious. So I gave him some months. He would come to me, he wouldn't find me. And uh, but one day, I remember first September 1975. It has uh, some months had passed, and I said, Okay, I think I'm convinced. Let me say yes. So I said yes. I was in schooling, he was also doing his um, service. So we courted for four years. Sometimes we disagree. But it wasn't for quite long, and we will come back together. And we realized we invested our time. We discussed a lot of things at length. We had real communication. I loved him the way he was because he didn't put up any false fronts. He didn't have, I also didn't have. Our backgrounds were almost the same. We were not rich, we were not also very poor average people, but we were determined to make it. So after the POSEC training, I worked for one year. He was also working at the bank in Cape Coast. And we decided to tie the knot. And we've been blessed with two ladies, two uh, gentlemen. And in ministry too, we are couples in ministry. In fact, we have grown together over the years met a lot of challenges, marital, parental, ministerial, but all things have worked out for our good. And now the intimacy, the oneness, the understanding is so unique. And sometimes I thank God for his life and for the grace God gave me to be patient with him and for him also to be patient with us. For if we had decided to separate, I think by now if he were in the arms of any other woman, I would I have been jealous. So it takes time to train, to nurture, to understand. And one thing I want to tell all ladies, when men grow, they are unique. So you see, when you start men chauvinism, trying to uh, do such and such, with time, when they grow, they are the best of friends. They are the best person who give listening years. And because you have been patient with them, in fact, you will enjoy for the rest of your life. So death. Reverend Emilia, um, you know, we were debating about counseling or going, yes, going for to see a pastor and going when you're courting and go for counseling. Mm. But a group of ladies were telling me that they are not up for it because you marry the guy you go for maybe six months a year counseling before you get married after the wedding and then the person starts showing a different character so do you think people should still go for counseling or people should go for counseling after the wedding mm -hmm. thank you very much we have a premarital counseling and we have postmarital counseling in fact counseling is an ongoing process because even uh, when you have the sevenfold unction of the Holy Spirit, counsel is one of it. And the word of God says, in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. You see, forever the word of God is settled. Nobody had a hand in marriage. Nobody suggested, Adam did not suggest to God to bring Eve. It is God's intention and God's purpose for man. And so, Whenever you want to enter such a, an institution, you need to learn the manual. And the manual is the Bible. Go to the Creator, the one who invented and ordained it. Like most of you have flashy cars now. The best repairer is the one those who manufactured it. So the same way, and you know, marriage is the only institution you are given the certificate before you enter. And that is enough to say that God expects you to work at it and to also enjoy it. Because everything is for enjoyment. That is God's plan. 
Counseling helps you to know the mind of God concerning your partner. Counseling is an enlightenment. It makes you know yourself. In counseling, you know your temperament, the weaknesses and the strengths, and how, and, and that of your partner, how you are able to, the two of you will agree to. Uh, sometimes you even have to negotiate. Really? Yes. To bring out the best. In a way that you want to go this way, the other also wants to go this way. This one is up, this one is down. One, the one up must come a little low, and the one down to must come a little up. This will negotiate to make it work. Wow. Yes. And so it really calls for counseling. And in counseling, you know the word of God concerning the institution about yourself. And in marriage, you cannot change anybody. You see, these days, people want to change their partners. I want to tell you you cannot. If there is any change, you must go to God and ask for grace to change. And as you change, you have a special eye to look to your partner through it. You, the fault might be there, but with your change, it is manageable. Wow, it's getting exciting and really? I can't wait for more. Really? So you don't want to miss it. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. In such a way that we keep a lot of things Welcome back. If you've just joined us, mm -hmm. I've been talking to Reverend Emilia Bodidakwa. She is a pastor and a marriage counselor. And why we got her on the show, she's very busy, but why we got her is that we live in a generation that marriages are going astray. Many people are not happy in their marriages. So many divorces, especially also in the church. But today we want to know um, from Reverend how we're going to keep our marriages. Some people have been married for a long time, but their marriages is gone stale. Mm. How are we going to spice up our marriage? Thank you very much. Uh, God told Adam, Genesis 2.15, when God placed Adam in the Garden of Eden and said, dress it and keep it. That is the law of maintenance and preservation. Whatever the Lord blesses you with, you must find ways and means of maintaining and preserving it so that you can enjoy uh, that thing for a long time and it will be the source of your joy and will bring life. Love really is life. So I would advise all marriage couples and all those who are yet to join that marriage is work. Marriage calls for making every effort to let it work. Fasting and prayer are very good, but what is uh, to be done by way of responsibility, God will never do it by way of a miracle. Invest your time, invest your talent, invest your treasure, work towards a meaningful end, and God will also bless you. And know that it is not about yourself. It is about God and your partner. It is about the home. And let's set our priorities right. Apart from your salvation, your marriage is the next. Even before ministry, anointing will not give you successful marriage. Money will not give you successful marriage. They are all supportive. They support the, the, the institution. But you must decide to work towards it by going to God, praying always, being there for your partner, having effective communication. There are a lot of challenges in marriage, but if you have effective and an ongoing communication, God's grace shall abound. I will be able to solve a lot of the uh, challenges. Why am I saying that? Nobody knows what is in your head. Nobody knows what is in your heart unless you come out to say it. We are limited in a lot of ways. Therefore, when you voice out in a way that will not be provocative, that is working on yourself, especially if you have a temper tantrums, working on your character, working on yourself. It is about you. Work on yourself. And when you work on yourself, you have a large heart to accommodate your partner, 
to be there when the challenges come. And we prepare before settings. We don't wait till it can. We must all be proactive. And when we do that, God will help us. God will help us. Because He is interested in our lives. And the word of God says He will perfect everything that concerns us. And other translations also say He will fulfill all the purpose of our lives. God wants us to enjoy life, to enjoy our partners, our children, and our home. And all listeners, the home is the first church. Make time for the church in your home. And you enjoy life at its fullest maximum. Emily, I yeah. feel like I'm in a, in a counseling session already. <laughs> but you know, you've been in marriage for 36 years. I'm, I'm, I think I'm getting there. I'm yeah. 15 years. Oh, but, you've uh, done well. The experience that each and every couple have, you know, is a story on its own. Mm. So I want you to take us through your journey of the victories and the you know the challenges that you've had so somebody watching can relate and say hey i'm not on an island mm. you know something like that um, the first challenge is acceptance mm. you know marriage is a threefold miracle a biological miracle a spiritual miracle and a social miracle and about the social miracle it calls for being accepted by the family members of your oh, spouse. Yeah. And that's one, they have their own background, they have their own expectation. Some will want you to toe the line of their mothers, others will want you to toe the line of their sisters. They are the, the ones they know. <laughs> so you are the one coming, the, the next lady coming to fit in. How will you be accepted? So from the beginning, there might be one or two misunderstanding, and I want to tell you, not all of them will love you the way you expect. But there is one thing you must all know. You are not married only to your spouse, but to the society and the family as well. Really? The, yes. Yes, and that is marriage. You see, you are not an island. <laughs> uh, therefore, you must have... This, you see, Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature. He had a favor with God and favor with men. And you know, he was even accepted, uh, he was even invited for a marriage, uh, uh, a, wedding. a wedding party. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we must also learn how to make ourselves accessible. Have that joy of living at peace with all men. And it takes you, because the word of God says, so long as it lies with you, live at peace with all men. So you must begin to work out. Sometimes the results might not be the best, but with prayer and with time, people will get to understand you. That is the first. And two, external challenges like loss of a job, financial uh, constraints, uh, knowing what you are in for, knowing your style and not having the means to meet it. You cannot blame your partner too. How do I work with the little I have? How do I present myself good to the world and not to portray my husband is not in a position to look after me? They are all challenges, but when you work towards it, you see, and the letter you have, you begin to go to God. The same God who fed 5,000 <laughs> with five loaves, yes, five loaves, and two fishes. He's still at work. So the letter you have, when you commit to God, God will bless the work of your hands. And I want to say, I started with little, but I'm blessed. Yes. It might not be... Uh, as others expect, but in my own small way, I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. I don't lack, and that one is enough. And the other one, ministerial challenges. You see, you have the calling of God, but you must also hear from God. God never asks us, we, we hear from God to establish a church, but to support His work. So sometimes when you turn to the supporting ministry, uh, it is grace. 
But when you wait on God and for God, God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Having the two couple in the ministry, that is not yours. You can imagine. But God is good. And uh, even the last one, God asking us to leave a very good ministry to go on missions. Uh, but God is so faithful. You see, when you're obedient to the calling of God, God also glorifies his name. So these are some of the challenges. But when you go to God, you understand your partner to get with togetherness, especially with the spirit of unity. Unity is not a union. Mm -hmm. Unity does not mean uniformity. You can have different views, but unity is a spirit. So when you are united in spirit, God will see the unity and will come down to bless according to his word. It's been very challenging, parental challenges too. But in all, God has been faithful. Emilia, this married thing, I think we have to have a whole like season of yes. marriage. But we're going to try within our minutes that we have, you know, to, to share with our viewers about what's happening in our um, generation concerning marriage. You know, I thought people come into marriage with love mm. and that unity you just spoke about. Mm. But along the line or along the journey, they become jealous of each other. Mm. Why such a thing? Mm. Thank you very much. I told you earlier on that marriage is a threefold miracle. A biological miracle, a spiritual miracle, and a social miracle. And we spoke on the social one. Now, biological miracle is that one plus one is not two. Is it? It's two. Spiritual arithmetic. One plus one is one. That is the biological okay. miracle. Okay. You see, you see, when you marry, the two of you are grafted together. His or her success is yours too as well. The success of your partner is also your success. You see, this, you, and in marriage, you must lose your personal identity so that the two of you can be under the same cloak. What am I saying? My own personal example, I love writing. My husband is people-oriented. I am a little bit, but his is more pronounced, and I'm time-oriented. So my, my time management is such that I make time to write. But he doesn't have time to write. By God's grace, I've written five books, and I want to tell you, he's the one who helped me to write those books. He hasn't written any. But the way he helps me to come out with it, and almost always, he buys the first copy. Wow. <laughs> and he pays it. He pays it? Yes. I thought you give it to him as a gift. No, 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 no. He pays it. Okay. You see, and when I look at it, eh, it is a way of helping me realize my, 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 my potential. Yeah. But glory goes to God. But me being his wife too, is also a blessing to him and me. He also has special areas. In fact, he ministers to people, and the people uh, sometimes they bless him with the things I need and give them to me. So you see, we must help each other to reach the level where God wants us to reach. And any glory. Any popularity, whatever it is, is for the two of you. Mm. You see, I come back to the self. When you want to do, you see, the kingdom principle is always at variance with earthly ones. If you want to do one plus one is two, I'm on my own, he's on my own, then you will not have the desired results. Self will come in, jealousy and envy. They are all fruit of the flesh. So when there is so much self in any relationship, they're bound to be jealousy. But when we apply worldly wisdom, uh, heavenly wisdom, when we invite Christ into the relationship, a husband's success is a success for the whole family. And when you work towards that meaningful goal, you will live to enjoy. There shouldn't be jealousy. No. There shouldn't be. It only comes in when you have self-interest. And self-interest must be abased. 
so that the glory of the Lord will shine on the whole members of the family. This has been exciting. So to, for us to wrap up, give us about five, just five tips that will make you know, somebody who is married, who is about to give up on their marriage, mm. or a couple that say, you know what, we've had enough, go your way. What would you say to that couple? Don't give up. Winners never quit, and quitters no. never win. You have held your hands to the plow. Do not look back. The word of God says, there will be no reward for you. You see, work towards it. Invest in it and believe God. God will reward you. Let's pray for our partners. Let's be patient with ourselves. Be patient with our uh, spouses and be patient with God. Three areas of patience. And with patience, in fact, you will yield a crop. You will have, you see, time and chance happen to everybody. And with time, you will realize your investment has never been in vain. That man you want to leave is the best of men. <laughs> that lady you want to leave, you give yourself some time. You will realize he's the most romantic, the most caring, the most tender women you've ever met. There are a lot of potentials in each one of us. Let's make time to invest in our partners, to help them, to mine the gold in them. With patience, you will realize you will bless with the best of partners. Amen. Wow. wow. I think you will have to come back. This is to be continued. So Reverend, where can we find you? You know, somebody might be listening and when I really want, you know, more counseling or more information. Where would, you know, they find you? I am in Ghana and uh, anytime I put my phone online, honestly, I have virtually have to put it off. Oh. I go to Adam FM as it's Napa. Okay. And uh, as and when you when you contact Nana Cheche, oh, you yes. will find me. Now they're going to be coming. Yes. But we want to say thank you so much for your time and for your wisdom. Mm. And we pray that you continue to bless people around the world. Thank you. God wish you bless you, thank Nana. You. So you've been watching the show, the Nana Cheche show. And today we've been talking about marriage, which is one of the most important institutions on this planet. If you're giving up, as Reverend said, don't give up. And if you're about to get married, it's the best thing you want to go into. Thank you so much. Tune in another week for a lovely episode. Thank you.